Welcome to Tiny Hands Big Dreams for another Meathead update. If you've been following along the Meathead project, we decided to buy what we thought were Cornish Cross, we'll get to that in a second, and raise them without feeding them, basically. Mostly. Mostly. All right. Now all the details, the devil's in the details. So, a little bit of data. Um, we've been weighing them weekly because otherwise we're just guessing at things. Uh, so they're now nine weeks old, which is far past the normal Cornish cross butcher date. We're kind of outside of this. Uh, let's see. Um, as of today, June 10th, they weigh... Here, you do this part. <laughs> 38, uh, 3,840 grams, or 8.5 pounds, or an average of 1.42 pounds each. Now, Obviously we have that's an average, that's... one especially heavy bowling ball of a bird, a few, like, yeah, you're good size looking. I have scrawny. Scrawny is literally named scrawny. scrawny. And then Pogo got stepped on by Sally, the lovely goat. Everybody loves Sally. She tried to kill the thing. Um, broke its leg. Did a whole video. Splinted it. Healed. Chicken is alive. Is the leg perfect? No. Is the chicken using the leg? It is bit. actually getting better by the day. But of course, by being like, injured and we've, we've like fed her bugs and things. She's, she's not really grown she, the she's same not, as the rest. No. Um, so... These may not be Cornish Cross. <laughs> they may not. Welcome to Ecuador. <laughs> Are we just going, hey, we got By vinegar, Cornish you Cross. think it's normal? No, it's watered down. You think this, you think that. So we've been, we bought some other chickens lately too. And, and you look at them and you're like, the whole rack is not the same looking. Yeah. There's, there's some <laughs> dinosaurs. No, actually that was one of our older chickens. That's a, that's a rooster right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And there's some that are naked neck, which is a genetic trait. Uh, there's some different colorations. We're like, there's a little more variability than we're used to from like tractors. And those supply. are all called um, sinceros, which is, is like a, a dual purpose. Supposed to be brown, yep. usually brown. The brown chicken-ish. Yeah. Um, mm. So basically, the more we learn, the more we realize that there is not quite the um, genetic... Mm -hmm. Rigid standards. Specificity. No. So anyway, so we bought, and they're like, oh, these are pure meat. They're all white. Cornish cross. Look at them. They look like Cornish cross. They look, the older ones in the cages look gross. They're, they're semi featherless or fat. Kind of what we're used to. So we bought those as small as we could get them. Um, and they really weren't interested in food. Like, we gave them some, and they're like, eh, no peck at it. And then they're gone. What we have found out, which is more interesting, is they are voracious bug eaters. The rest of the fowl, the chickens, the ducks... They're lazy. Like, we should eat them all. Um, <laughs> those things non-stop every minute they're out. And they're, the, like, the last ones in, in their coop. Bug, 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 bug. They'll eat yeah. bugs. The other ones won't. They'll eat piles of ants. They'll eat dead ants um, that we flamed. Because... And they won't really eat vegetation. Yeah, they don't, they don't care. They're like, eh, no. They want Which is kind bugs. of amazing and really useful for us. We don't actually want the birds to eat the vegetation, especially in the garden. They don't really touch it. They just want bugs. Like this, this whole setup, uh, the maracuya behind us, uh, is fenced because the ducks will jump up and eat every bit of it, strip the bark, eat the leaves. Ducks. Um, nope. So they're they're called Cubanos. Which means whatever it means. They look like Cornish cross. But they but also... Their, their growth rate is slower, but they're far more... I mean... Their behaviors are great. Like, we really like them. They're so friendly. They're friendly. They're wonderful. They yeah. go home every night. We've never had to chase them around and put them in their coop like the other chickens. Um, yeah. So, that's, I mean, some of the stuff we've learned, because this was all an experiment. Uh, we didn't know how they would do being completely free. This is not just pasture. This is not um, in a, a tractor. This is completely free. They wander down the road. They, they roam far. That was one of the things we learned. They roam really far. And they roam far from beginning they're just tiny little chickens they're all the way down off the property around the corner heading down no, nobody goes that far no. these little like um yeah so the last video we did they were in a small enclosed area yeah uh, we then moved them into a semi-fence garden I'm doing a garden update things changed um i took that fence down hoping that they would sort of stay because most chickens, especially small chickens, they, sort of stay in their And they range home further area. and further every day? No, they just left. They just yeah. Left. I'm like, well, come back. Will you, will you come back? And they do. They do. They come back to their, their little house every night. We thought they were so gone so many times. 
they come back. down off the hill. But they've been that. eating bugs voraciously, which is the problem we mm -hmm. have. There's just too many bugs. We don't want to use pesticides. Hello, meatheads. Um, pleasant surprise. The growth rate is slower now. It is slower, slower than we thought. Um, I sort of thought 12 weeks. You, I think, said nine. You being hopeful. We're, we're, we're going to... We're going to be months before we want to book. Yeah, we're going to be four um, or five months. Now, well, go ahead. <laughs> but that being said, um, we're we're not really feeding them. So, like, even the, no. the little tiny amount of food that we were giving them. Which was supposed to be a quarter pound a day. Right. Like, they weren't even eating that all. They would leave it. They would leave it. So, it would come back at night and they could go to feed them. He's like, they still have food. And we're like, well, no. save it. And, and so, you know, we made notes of, like, there's a bunch of times he didn't give them a second cup in the day. And we were like, well, maybe later when they're bigger, they'll want a little more. And then we'll like put that back in. And now in it turns out that out. they don't actually eat it all. And then the other chickens just go and scavenge it. Because so they're freeloaders. The cost to raise them is... Gosh, it's near nothing. It's near nothing. Honestly, I think that except for trying to train them to come home, we could have never fed them corn or, or any kind of feed. Yeah. And they would have been perfectly happy. Yeah. So... Um, aside from the cost of the chicks themselves, they're free. Dollar forty. Dollar forty. Um, and part of our plan, which sort of wraps into, we bought more chickens yesterday. Oops. Um, part of our plan is to see because they have such slow growth rate and they seem to be so healthy, we're going to see if we can actually use them as as dual purpose birds um, for eggs and then be able to hatch those. And then just have basically zero cost birds, except right. for the power that we use for the incubator. Which That's about it. is free if the sun is out. Yeah. But we're like, you know, we could either buy food or we could buy these chickens. Gosh, <laughs> we really like eating. That's kind of fun. <laughs> but we could buy a bunch budget. of chickens. But if we don't have to feed them, and that's what our first experience is, like, we don't have to pay for food. We just let them out and they eat nature and they get bigger. So eventually we can take the meat and look at we have this much meat and we spent this much that's a much better deal than buying meat at any price yeah um so interesting it's been quite the interesting experiment and the thing i i guess that surprised me the most was that they're still so friendly yeah they, they bounce around here there we pick them up all the time like we don't put them over here move them around they get by the dog dog does not like tries not to eat them sits there shaking they're just like ha, ha, ha. gonna hang out next to dog they like to in antagonize him a bit. For a dog that has historically had issues eating small fowl before we got He's him. He's doing good, but man, they need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll poke the bear. <laughs> they're overly friendly, perhaps. But yeah. you're doing really well. Um, it's working? It's working. I'm uh, interested to see how long until we, we get a solid-sized bird. We actually got a, 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 a smattering more. Um, we got the, the dual-purpose ones, and then we got more of, of these ones. Honestly, if they reduce the bugs by their their numbers again, and we aren't paying for food, like so, there's a little bit of care that goes into them. Um, the, the, nothing crazy. The kid goes and he, you know, fills their water, but mostly they find water that's out somewhere. And then we open and close their coop. Occasionally, a little bit of corn that is less about food and more about make sure you come home. Yeah, and then the splint for the one the goat well, stepped okay. on. We take. We take our animal care a little far sometimes. Most people would not have splinted the broken leg of a meat bird. But, you know, we put time and a little bit of money into the bird. There's no point in not trying. So. <laughs> what we do. Yeah. But honestly, it's it's working really well. Um, they're real fun. Yeah. They're, like they're real fun. We actually really like them. That's part. We're like, we could just get a lot more of these. We could keep one as a rooster and like cross We like them more than most of our other chickens. Ah, they're all useless annoying skinny little <laughs> so we're going for big big yeah. fat useful birds so this was supposed to be yeah the, the final like like end of, of project update and reality this is now somewhere like the middle um but that being said if we just take the the birds and we just space them out earlier and buy them on a cycle of every few months or and, hatch them or hatch them and then every six months yeah. we're harvesting we're still paying almost nothing for their food. Yep. Um, the fact that it takes longer doesn't doesn't actually, affect us now that we know. As long as we started ahead, which we've now started, um, and they just eat bugs the whole time, which 
Josh, we need that help. They'll find a line of ants. They'll just sit there and just peck and peck and peck and peck. We, I killed some wasps with some some soapy dish soap and water that were on the house. Big wad of them. And then the meatheads came over and they're like, okay. So they're like the perfect cleanup crew. Every one of them. Yeah. Let the rest of the lazy fowl out here wandering <laughs> around, tearing up things. All right. So that's that's that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's going to have to be another update. <laughs> At least one, um, and then maybe a finale after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. All right. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.